Hello, I am doing a video today on guided independent journeys. So this is the newest program that I have launched here at Compass uh, to essentially give more options to intended parents that uh, are needing to look into surrogacy for uh, family building. And I wanted to take a moment to explain what it is, uh, why I have started it, and how it looks different uh, than a like a traditional agency um, guided journey that, that I also do. So first and foremost, a little bit about Compass, about me. Uh, we do, we specialize in both uh, gestational surrogacy journeys. Uh, so we've got the full service agency option uh, through that is, that's kind of what I, what my background is in or where I started. So uh, we do those full service journeys. Uh, then we also have a known egg donation uh, agency side uh, where we navigate egg donation journeys for intended parents and donors that are looking at doing uh, known uh, egg donation cycles. And then, of course, launching the new, the uh, guided independent journey option. So uh, about me, my name is Karen Schaefer, and I have I been, I guess, in this world of infertility, <laughs> as my husband likes to say, uh, for quite a while now. So I, on a personal level, I went through uh, infertility, and we went through IVF in order to our children. So I now have a uh, seven-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old son. And I, I was then also a egg donor, a surrogate, a embryo donor. And I started in this, um, I hate calling it an industry, but I'm going to call it an industry because I don't have a better word for it. Uh, but within this industry of, of uh, third-party reproduction professionally uh, about five years ago. So uh, Compass is newer, uh, but we are rolling through. We're starting some cases uh, that I've been able to do from my experience uh, with the past agency. And we're, um, we're, feeling really good about the direction that the company is going in and some of these newer options that we're able to offer. So I always like to kind of start with what our mission statement is so you can understand uh, where our hearts are, where our kind of uh, where we came from with the initiation of uh, of the company altogether, but also of this program. Uh, so our mission is to navigate coordinate and assist paths to parenthood through gestational surrogacy and known egg donation with honesty, ethical actions, transparency, and strong communication as top priorities in each individualized journey. Um, so that's kind of putting it all together as far as what our goals are, what our mission is here at Compass. Uh, so I'm going to go over basically the, the question that I get a lot in general of do I need an agency? I went over this a bit in uh, the last video where it's talking about do I go you know independently or with an agency? So I really felt like I want to go over this not as much you know as far in depth as I did in that video and that's also available but it will kind of give you a good idea as to um, you know, what, what the thought process was behind the creation of this program. Uh, so, so again, my answer is still no, <laughs> you do not need an agency. Uh, it's, we're not a, a pertinent part of the process when it comes to the, the parentage piece, which is always going to be the most significant. Uh, so we need to make sure that everything that, um, that intended parents do uh, through a surrogate journey is, going to be legal that on, on a big picture it needs to be legal so that's um it needs to be legal within the state that the surrogate is giving birth and uh that is important both for the journey itself and then also for your the safety uh with uh you being granted parentage you want to make sure that you're not missing any steps um but the agency is not one of those steps that the courts are looking for when they're um and granting parentage to you of, of that child. Uh, so if you want to do this on your own, 
you absolutely can. But these are three of the things that I've kind of uh, started pointing out to people that you're going to want to make sure that you, um, you know, delve into or, or you realize before before starting on your journey. Uh, so the first, of course, is education. Um, surrogacy with surrogacy it's not going to be a, a one-stop shop so it's not a, a situation where you can you know uh, go to one person or one entity and be like hey this is what i'm gonna do um i want to essentially either purchase this for you or purchase services from you and have you put it all together uh, that doesn't exist outside of the agency so you're going to have to educate yourself on the process and then figure out what those different steps are to then, you know, kind of put that puzzle together and figure out when certain aspects occur during the journey and uh, when you need to start bringing in that next step so that you're not seeing kind of like a backup of that that workflow, as I call it, uh, up into um, until you get to the end of the journey. Uh, partnerships is a big thing. So uh, one of the things that, you know, as an agency, we've got the advantage of is since this is what we're doing day in and day out, we've developed those professional relationships and partnerships with uh, other um, people that, you know, are either legal entities or clinical uh, staff and in the care on that side. So we, because we've already established those relationships, we know what to expect. We know what their policies and their procedures are. So when it comes to, um, you know, going into the journey with you, it's very easy for us to give you clear expectations on what the process will look like with that uh, specific individual or that entity and uh, and give you clear cut timelines. Whereas when you're doing this on your own, uh, chances are you've never worked with these different professionals or whomever you're choosing to go with for this. So you're going to have to figure that out along the way and uh, maybe, you know, lean on others that have gone through the process before or uh, even, you know, ask different questions of the professional to be able to gain that insight as to what those timelines will look like and and how the journey will play out and when they recommend you start the next steps especially you know if you're going from screening to legal to uh to transfer when exactly should those steps occur when should you open your escrow there's just a lot of different moving parts that uh you'll it can vary depending on the professional team that you're choosing within the different parts of this process uh and then of course, resilience. And so, and I mentioned this in my other video that it's, <laughs> yeah, I, I know you're resilient and I know that uh, for many, many people undergoing this this journey uh, to, to parenthood, you've already been through quite a bit and uh, you never really expected in many instances to be here, especially if it's due to an um, infertility diagnosis. So it's, you've built up a lot of resilience and a lot of strength throughout this, uh, but undergoing the journey itself, when it's actually, when you're faced with it, when you're in it, when you're starting to see that it's not like real clear cut and definitive and that things will occur, hiccups will occur, things will pop up, um, that resilience is gonna have to be really, really strong to be able to face those head on and not have, you know, is someone kind of within your, um, within your your realm or your world to be able to to lean on and get advice from that you may have seen these these situations happen before uh, so you'll that's something that i i know many people have taken um these journeys on and, and they they are aware of this and it goes beautifully because they've prepared themselves for those you know ups and downs and and they know that it's going to take a little bit more emotional effort um to be able to not only navigate this on a uh, on a relationship basis, but also that business basis. Uh, so with, um, you know, how the agency will help me, I'm not going to go into the train theory in depth on this video, but I did want to kind of go over the different steps that I talked about uh, in, in the other one of why do I need an agency to just uh, kind of go over the, the bigger picture. So the first step is that the agency does uh, is lining up the tracks. So we're uh, we are putting 
the, the track pieces in order to make the clearest and the straightest path possible to the goal. Uh, so that's the first basically it's kind of think of it like the um the outline of your paper or the beginning part of the process we're needing to make sure that everything is put into place so that when we start um packing up the train and, and getting that in place that the track is where we need to be going uh the second is getting those box cars in place so uh this i i say that the box cars each box car kind of represents a different process or a point in the process. So your clinic will have a couple box cars, your legal team will have a box car, your escrow is a box car. Every different, you know, part and piece of this journey will be its own um, individual box car. And the reason I like to put it in um, into this, you know, concept is that it's important to understand that what the agency is doing is making sure that the boxcar exists, that it's been put into place. Uh, but each professional will load that boxcar differently depending on their requirements and their timelines and, you know, the, the individual policies and procedures of their um, side of the process. So the agency is there to make sure boxcar is there, see and over, you know, oversee, I guess I would say, um, how they're packing up that box car so that if something doesn't look quite right or it may lead to additional questions that could have an impact on you know future steps within the journey we're able to notify you as the parents and be like hey this might be a little bit different than what we've seen in the past uh, because our job really is to foresee potential issues to either stop them or make sure that we have a very uh, clear um, plan B and plan C in case plan A doesn't go as we expect. So it's it's basically maintaining getting that train put together with all the box cars that are going to be needed in order to leave the, <laughs> the start line, the, the first station and make it to the, the completion of this journey. And the agency, so you can think of the agency as acting as the conductor. So once the train is set, we're ready to go, ready to get rolling down those tracks. We um, we are there to make sure that that train does start moving. It's moving at a good pace and uh, there's nothing that's going on within those boxcars that's causing us to drag or lose traction or anything else that could potentially make this journey um, either more costly or take more time than is necessary on the points of the journey that we can control. Uh, in addition, it's it's not our first train ride. <laughs> so we're we're constantly, you know, on on these trains and, and helping along the way and making sure that uh, each of our intended parents are getting where they need to go. And so we have, uh, we've, I, I say we've been there, done that, but, uh, really if, if something comes up during your, your train ride or your journey, uh, chances are very, very high. We have experienced that situation before. And so we are able to better navigate it and give you advice based on, uh, previous outcomes that we've seen. And there's, I guess I would say that there's not quite as much that scares us uh, a little bit further into this than, um, you know, than maybe it would to someone that this is your very first journey and you didn't know that that was a possibility or nobody ever told you that or it just wasn't something that you even in your wildest dreams would have imagined could happen. So that's one of the things with, with an agency is that we... I, even especially with the bad things, unfortunately, we have seen them. And, and so we can kind of help, um, help navigate you through that to make sure that we're, we're giving you the best experience possible. And we're keeping the, the health and safety of uh, both your surrogate and your baby as our top priority. Okay, so how does an independent look journey look different than say a traditional agency um, uh, journey package, I guess that, that's what I would call, call it. Uh, but how how is this different? What am I offering 
that um, allows it to be a cheaper option. But what benefit is it to you uh, to go with Compass for this journey over either going with the full service package or doing this independently? Uh, so I'll go over the two biggest difference differences in this. So first off, we we are we're your ally. We're kind of here to stand alongside of you and make sure that um, the steps are being followed in a process that makes the most sense uh, so that you're not losing time and money on this journey. So of course, the first huge difference of this is that if you choose to do this, this program, it, there's no internal matching. So we do uh, screen surrogates, we recruit for surrogates, we do all of that here at Compass. Uh, and then those surrogates are getting matched with our intended parents that are paying uh, the full agency fee. They want that full agency experience. Uh, in this, the idea is you have found your surrogate, you've put in you know, the time, effort, energy, you have found her, chances are extremely high that, you know, it's going to move forward. She maybe even she's been okayed by your clinic on paper. And then you're like, okay, great. We found her. Now what do we do? So that's kind of the point in which uh, compass steps in with this is, is after that match has been found. Um, it also it really, it looks more like a business relationship rather than um a relationship that's that's based on you know communication and more personalization uh so i and not like this is it, they're all business relationships right so i'm i'm that is the main part of an agency is to make sure that the business aspects the logistics of the journey are happening um smoothly uh, so that you're you're getting to the desired outcome but with um, with this, uh, how it looks the most different is that Compass will not have a whole lot of communication directly with your surrogate. So we're not existing necessarily to be that um, that support person to them, that you know shoulder to lean on during the process. Uh, the the idea is that uh, the surrogate has come to you for an independent journey with there's like mindedness there, right? So she is also wanting that independent journey. She feels like this is something that she can handle on her own, and she feels strongly that she um, does not need that additional handholding from the agency. So she's going down this path of of an independent journey, and so what it will look like more is that we're here kind of holding your hand as the intended parents and walking you through those business like logistical steps of the process to make sure that everything is lined up so that it does go smoothly uh, and so that you can you know maybe take out some of that awkward side of it you know the money talk the business talk all of those parts and pieces can kind of be put onto the agency side so that you can focus on that relationship building with your surrogate and obviously focus on on your future child that uh, we're bringing into this world. Uh, so a few program details, things that you know might make it look a little bit different than than a full service agency. Um, the first is that we do have package options. So every intended parent that that comes to me, whether it be with uh, with this package or uh, with our full service package, I. Uh, I see a wide range of knowledge um, and education that has gone into the process before coming to me. So I have some parents where they're like, I really don't care to learn much. I just know that this has to be our path. Here's what we need. You take the reins, just tell me what to do. So I've got you know couples right from that part all the way up to we have been researching this for five years because we know that this is the journey that we need to take but it's um it's pricey we've had to take time to save up for this we're finally ready but we feel like this is our second language now and this is what we've been you know researching for on a consistent basis for the last five years so there's a very very wide range of that knowledge base that i see with with my parents so with the guided independent um option i have a package that i uh, is basically like those 
I call it like the foundational parts of it, the, the things that have to be done in order to have a, um, a, a successful surrogate journey. Um, so if you want help with just a few of those, you know, foundational pieces, um, that is an option. And then we've got a second that adds in uh, more um, handholding, I guess I would say, through the process up until pregnancy is achieved uh, with those logistical steps involved. And then we've got the third and final that will also help on the um, more so on once we need to start establishing uh, parentage or what documents are needed for that side, as well as um, initiating the plan with the hospital and the social work worker team and everything on that side so that we know that the actual birth experience is also going to be smooth. So there's there's different levels and you can kind of tailor it to what you're needing, you're wanting based on um, what you've already put into this process. Uh, it is more of a fee for service. So with this, it's um, because especially because it's something where you're bringing the surrogate to me, it's not someone that I have personally vetted or uh, have screened. We obviously will finish up that screening process for what, whatever needs to be done in order to get her fully you know qualified for your clinic. We'll we'll help with those steps. but it's it's going to look a lot different uh, with it kind of with the agency coming in after the fact. So it's um, I've set up the payments to essentially be in smaller chunks so that you feel as though you're you're paying for the services right before those services are rendered. Uh, and it's it's one of those things to where if the match, you know, say it unfortunately breaks somewhere in the process uh, and you've you've started by paying for like the first, you know, fourth of the agency fee, we've only gotten through those steps. Well, then of course that next installment isn't going to be owed because we're not getting to those steps. And then you can take a step back. You can decide, do I want to go search for a candidate myself again? And then you would come back to me, we'd start the process over. Uh, or um, you can decide at that point, you know what, it took so much time and effort just to find this one candidate. I just want to go with the full service agency um then we can look into switching into that program so it's i i wanted to be able to break up those payments so that you don't feel like you're like here's thousands of dollars for a full agency fee i'm going to cross my fingers everything works out um it's it's more so paying along the way as we get to those steps uh it still feels like an independent journey and this is extremely important uh, not only for the intended parents to understand but for the your surrogate candidate to understand uh, because like i said a lot of times if she's looking independently uh and she wants that there's going to be some reasons behind that um and so a lot of times there are you know maybe these perceived benefits of an independent journey that there's no middleman that maybe gets in the way or makes things complicated which you know, i i've seen you know, of course, there's, you know, there's good, bad and ugly type of thing. And I've I've seen some of those instances where it's like if, if the agency wasn't involved, maybe it wouldn't have gone sideways. And so it's I can understand why some people come in with those thought processes and ideas. And so we don't ever want your candidate to feel like it was kind of like a bait and switch of, oh, yeah, we want it independent. But really, we're now bringing in the agency. So it's it's going to be something where you're going to want to set it up with your candidate uh, that the agency is basically there on a logistical level. We're there to make sure that the business steps are being placed properly, um, but she is still going to have the same relationship with you and you'll be her main point of contact throughout throughout the journey, just like it would be if, if I weren't involved in this. Uh, so it's. I, I just like to point that out in general because I, I can see, you know, why a candidate may have some hesitations for that. And I want to make sure that I'm, I'm addressing that so that we can remove those hesitations um, and, and make sure that there's, there's no pushback from the very beginning of this. And it can also, with the program, it can help shorten the timeline. So when I was speaking earlier about what you need in order to navigate uh, an independent journey. Uh, we spoke about, you know, those partnerships and those collaborations and the steps happening in a, in a logical order. Since, again, this is something that I'm doing all the time, uh, the agency is doing, we're navigating this. 
we've got all those built-in connections and, and we understand the process. We know which things need to be overlapped, which things we need to hold off on, um, which things maybe we can, you know, flip the box cars and like, let's get this box car loaded up first because things are moving faster on this side and it's not going to have a negative impact to your budget. Those are all those things that we can foresee and help with uh, it, that it might, you know, of course, if it's your first independent journey, it's your first journey. It's, it's something that you haven't had to navigate before. So by going with an agency with this program, it can help shorten down the timeline, which ultimately does help reduce overall costs. Uh, so I wanted to talk about why we made this an option. Um, I've seen some pushback uh, on, on the agency side, and I completely understand it because it can be, um, we never want to negate the benefits that an agency uh, has for intended parents. Uh, I, this is, it's kind of like my bread and butter, you know, the full service agency. This is what I have been doing for years. And it's something that I'm still very passionate about, and I see the value in it. If I didn't, it's not a service that I would offer. Um, but at the same time, we also need to be aware of the changes that are happening in and around our, um, our environment to then navigate and change along with it and not fight it. Because it's it, just like anything else, changes will occur. We need to be able to foresee those changes and we need to then take a look internally to see how we might be able to, you know, change with it, improve upon it and, and really um, offer something new and different that will um, help alleviate some of that pushback that we get. Uh, so within the, the past few years, what we've seen is, uh, especially with the pandemic, we noticed that there, it was kind of like a decrease in demand when the pandemic first hit, uh, which then um, kind of caused like this slew of availability and surrogates. So it was kind of backwards for a little bit there. But then what happened is that as the world started opening up, the demand grew for needing a surrogate. We started getting more and more intended parents that had pushed the journey off over, you know, the, the like 2020 into 2021 and so the demand just grew so large and then we had less surrogates for a couple reasons um one is that the the vaccine mandate became um more consistent throughout a lot of uh, clinical teams around the us and so that did make a difference on uh, who could be qualified for surrogacy uh and then we also because the world was opening up, so many people were like, well, wait a second, now I wanna do all this stuff that I haven't been able to do for the last you know, year, 18 months. Uh, so then vacations were being planned, different things that just aren't conducive to a surrogacy journey. So it's like we, for just a short amount of time, we saw a high number of surrogates, low number of IPs, and it shifted and it shifted fast. And when that shift occurred, it, we then saw these compensation requests come in much higher because word got out. It's um, like I said, I don't like to call it an industry, but it's like anything else. It's a supply and demand issue. Uh, the more you have a need for something, the more it can push that cost up. And so we saw that happen with surrogacy compensation. And I have seen, you know, in, even internally, I try to you know, explain to women that are coming that might be seeing these ads for ridiculously high compensation rates that, yeah, it's probably there. It probably can be offered, but it can be offered by a very, very small percentage of intended parents. And the reality is, is that these are still human beings behind these compensation amounts that are being um, presented to them. So it's um, in order to make sure that this is an attainable journey for the masses or for, for everyone that needs to go down this path, we wanna make sure that um, we're being reasonable. But on the other hand, there is still a little bit of a, we need to kind of go with the flow and understand that just like everything else inflates, so have these compensation requests. And so how do you keep it in check while also maintaining your, your surrogate pool and make sure that you're not losing someone over a couple thousand dollars? Um, 
And then as that became, you know, the norm, like say it started more at like 35 and now we were seeing like 40 to 45 in first timer comp, it's people start with pushing back, saying it's ridiculous, and then it becomes agreeable. They become agreeable to it. It happens as, okay, I guess we'll do it because what other choice do we have? And then it becomes commonplace. And that's just like anything else, you know, within um, within economics. It's just like the, the more it becomes um, commonplace or the more people agree to it, the more common it becomes. So we saw that with surrogate comp too. But what that's done is that it, since that one area has increased in costs, um, it's increased the overall journey cost too. And it's, my main concern when I started seeing these increases in costs is that we would get to a point to where the intended parents need to cut corners financially. And one of the things that makes the most sense because it isn't needed, it's not a requirement on a legal basis is the agency, the services of an agency. But that then turns into another concern of mine that by cutting out the agency, there could be steps that are missed both on a legal basis and an ethical basis that can cause um, the image of surrogacy or the strong um, reputation that we've built as an ethical practice as we've you know fine tuned um, the, the, the process in general. I don't want us to lose that reputation and I don't want us to as you know as a industry um, basically see a, a downfall of ethical practices and behavior on a whole which could then put surrogacy in a bad light and then ruin this as a potential opportunity for parents to build their families in the future because it is a necessity for so many people that want to build their families. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I was offering a program that could be kind of like, I call it like agency light, but it, it gives you some direction and it, it sets up those business foundational parts and pieces of the journey at the beginning through, you know, whichever stage you need assistance with so that we are ma making sure that we're maintaining an ethical journey and we're maintaining, um, like consistency within the steps that we're taking to get you to the finish line as soon as possible and for the least amount of money as possible. Uh, so that's really, that is my overall goal. And I know that I'll see some pushback, um, you know, from, from an industry basis, but I want to make sure that we're, we're keeping um, our, our main goal uh, as keeping surrogacy ethical in general as a um, attainable family building option. Uh, so ultimately, I want people to be able to choose independent journeys because it's truly what they want to do and not because they have to do it from a financial standpoint. It should always be an option. And I want to make sure that the use of an agency is also an option for uh, for every intended parent out there. Um, so if you feel like this is something that uh, you could benefit from, you found your match, you want to move forward, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than open to you know answer your other questions that you have and, and go over the um, the program a little bit more in depth based on your your wants and your needs uh or even if you know you you're needing to just now start the search for your surrogate it might help to speak with me first so that you know um what you're doing what you're looking for uh and and make sure that we're we're getting you a good solid candidate um in your independent search before we even get to this point. Uh, so please feel free to reach out for your um, your free IP console. I would be more than happy to uh, speak with you about that. And I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for uh, taking time to, to listen to my reasonings behind this and why I've kind of initiated this program. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of your week.